As a Diablo player of many years, I was always scared to delve into the behemoth of complexity that Path of Exile represents. Watching YouTube videos of endgame builds felt more akin to a techno festival reel than a video game, which wasn't appealing to me at all. But now that I've discovered the game and played quite a bit, I can't believe all the amazing game mechanics I have missed out on for the past years. So today I can safely say that Path of Exile is the best ARPG out there. And without further ado, let me help you get into this game. I'll create a character with you and guide you through some of the most important concepts to get you started without overwhelming you. Welcome to Path of Exile. You've just decided to create your first character, but wait, we need to look at leagues. This is your first decision and it's an important one. Temporary leagues or seasons are often the most dynamic aspect of Path of Exile. These are very similar to seasonal realms in Diablo 4, such as the Season of Blood or the Season of the Construct. These leagues introduce fresh content and reset the game environment, allowing you to start anew and last for approximately three months. Each of these seasons brings new mechanics, but you shouldn't worry about that too much right now. The Standard League is the equivalent to the Eternal Realm in Diablo 4. It's where all your seasonal characters end up when the current seasonal league finishes. Now, where Path of Exile diverges from Diablo is with the options such as Solo, Self, Found, and Ruthless. Both permanent and temporary leagues offer the SSF option, Solo, Self, Found. It's a unique mode where trading and partying with others is disabled. This mode is designed for those seeking a more self-reliant challenge. You rely solely on your own finds, your skill, you can't access the trading, that kind of stuff. It's generally recommended for more experienced individuals, as the game's economy and progression systems are heavily built around player interaction and trade, so we won't worry about that. And lastly, Ruthless is simply a harder way to play the game with extreme item scarcity. For your first playthrough, starting in the current seasonal league is my advice. It is the most popular and represents the core Path of Exile experience for many. Also, guides and community resources typically cater to this league, making it easier to find assistance and advice as you learn the game. By the way, if you need help, make sure to join our Discord, where we have people there to help out new players. Your first major decision after selecting a league is choosing a class for your character. This choice is pivotal, as it determines your starting point in the vast passive skill tree, which we'll get to in a minute. As you progress, you also get the chance to specialize further by choosing an Ascendancy subclass, which enhances your character's abilities in specific ways. Let's start with the classes I recommend, the ones we call pure classes, because they usually focus on one of the three stats. Before we get into the classes, let me just say that these are my impressions as a newer player, and they might not be 100% accurate. Just keep that in mind. The Marauder is akin to the Barbarian in Diablo 4. He's your melee class. This class focuses mostly on being either tanky or reckless, with ease of access to fire builds. The Marauder is a formidable force that I love to play. Then we have the Ranger, who focuses on dexterity, and is comparable to a ranged rogue in Diablo. Specializes in ranged combat, using bows, that kind of stuff. This class focuses on attack speed and evasion as gameplay mechanics. Moving on from the Ranger, we have the Witch, who focuses on intelligence. The Witch operates similarly to the Sorcerer in Diablo 4, dealing high spell damage and magic stuff, you know? Early investment in minion skills allow the Witch to become a souped-up version of Diablo 4's Necromancers with minions galore if that's your cup of tea. With those behind us, I think we should briefly go through the hybrid classes. We've got the Duelist, who focuses on Dexterity and Strength, the Shadow, Dexterity and Intelligence, and the Templar, Intelligence and Strength, reminiscent of the Paladin from Diablo 2. 
For newcomers, I advise to start with one of the pure classes, Marauder, Ranger, or Witch. These classes focus on a single attribute, simplifying the learning curve in my opinion and allowing for a more straightforward build path. For this guide, I'm going to pick the Witch because I want to discover more about magic in Path of Exile. From here, you can go even deeper, as each class features three specializations called Ascendancies that you unlock around level 40 or so by completing the Labyrinth. Each Ascendancy features a small but incredibly powerful passive skill tree. As an example, the Witch can specialize into the Necromancer, Occultist or Elementalist Ascendancies. All Path of Exile build guides are named after the Ascendancy of a class rather than the class name itself, so keep that in mind. Given the game's complexity, utilizing a build guide is a practical approach to navigating the initial insane learning curve, let's be honest. They offer structured plans for your playstyle, focusing on skill selections, gear recommendations, and multiple strategies for progression. They simplify the decision-making process, allowing you to concentrate on gameplay mechanics and enjoyment rather than the intricacies of build optimization. Now, for many, including myself, the discovery and experimentation with builds is a rewarding aspect of Path of Exile. However, this approach requires a willingness to face potential setbacks and a deeper investment in understanding the game's mechanics, which isn't to everyone's liking. It's a big time sink. If you prefer a more guided experience or wish to ensure a smoother leveling phase, a build guide is what I recommend. So when choosing a build, especially for first timers, I would advise to go to maxroll.gg, look for build guides, filter by league starters, and just pick whatever looks cool to you. Platforms like Maxroll offer an array of league starter guides that are tailored for new or returning players and they are a perfect place to start. For this guide, I'm picking the Detonate Dead Elementalist build, because it looks cool to me. While following a build guide, it's crucial to have the guide readily accessible, particularly the leveling tab, which outlines the optimal progression path through the game's early stages. This section of the guide will direct you and tell you what to do when it comes to skill acquisition, gear upgrades, and efficient leveling methods. So make sure you have it open in a browser window somewhere at all times. Okay, we now have our class, our league, and our build. Let's get to playing the game. Path of Exile features a 10-act campaign, each act taking place in a distinctive location on the vast continent of Rayclast. This journey is a long one, but it's filled with challenging bosses that test your skills and understanding of the game mechanics. For those familiar with Diablo 2, the structure of Path of Exile's campaign will feel very similar. With its segmented acts and evolving storyline, every quest you undertake is clearly marked on your map. And while not all quests are mandatory, I would advise you do them all on your first playthrough. A lot of folk on the internet will tell you that the game only starts at endgame, and although there is some truth to that, I found the campaign to be a lot of fun to explore and play through. So don't rush it. Take your time to explore, learn, and enjoy the game. So you've killed your first mob and you looted a skill gem. What now? In Path of Exile, one of the most distinctive feature is the skill system, where skills are represented by active skill gems. Unlike many other games where classes dictate available skills, here you have the freedom to choose and customize skills regardless of your chosen class, which is crazy but can also be overwhelming. So listen carefully. Active skill gems grant you abilities when slotted into your gear sockets. The true power of these gems, however, is revealed when they are combined with support gems. Support gems modify active skill gems by enhancing the damage, altering the behavior, or even changing the fundamental mechanics of that skill. This, in my opinion, is the coolest part of Path of Exile. It truly boggles the mind, the amount of variations to a skill you can create with a little creativity and the right items. 
To use a skill gem, you must insert it into a socket on your gear that matches that color. Red for strength, green for dexterity, and blue for intelligence. Oh, and if you plan on using a support gem, make sure it's connected by a link to the active skill gem. Otherwise, it just won't work. Okay, great. You've killed a few mobs, you've bashed some heads in, but wait. You just leveled up and you've unlocked a skill point. Time to open that passive skill tree for the first time and oh my god. The passive skill tree in Path of Exile is a vast, vast network of nodes that offer a wide range of enhancements and abilities for your character. Its size and complexity can be daunting at first for sure, particularly for first-time players. This expansive tree is what sets Path of Exile apart in terms of character customization and depth compared to other ARPGs. And you won't only get points from leveling up, you also get points from completing certain quests. These points unlock passive bonuses in the passive skill tree, such as increases to damages, defense, specific skill enhancements. This is what shapes your character's build and playstyle. The tree encompasses the passive abilities of all classes, making it appear more intimidating than it actually is. Imagine combining the passive abilities of all classes from a game like Diablo 4 into a single, unified skill tree. It still wouldn't be half as awesome as the Path of Exile tree. The good news is that the guide you picked earlier will hold your hand. You just need to look at your build page and see what the leveling tab tells you to do as you level up. Don't overcomplicate it just now. Also, if you have a hard time finding a node, don't forget that the tree comes with a search functionality that highlights any nodes you need to find. It's very handy and it's in the top right of the screen. Now, before we go, I should probably also quickly talk about currencies as they play a huge part of Path of Exile and you'll need to figure them out at some point. As you play the game, you'll quickly realize that you aren't picking up any gold. That's because in Path of Exile, the concept of currency goes beyond a simple means of transaction found in most other RPGs. Here, currency items serve a dual purpose. They are both a medium for trade and a tool for crafting, making the game's economy really unique. Now, I don't want to confuse you too much at this stage, so I'll keep the following information light and breezy. Path of Exile uses various types of currency items, each with its own specific function. These items can modify gear, reroll stats, upgrade item quality, and more. So make sure to read every currency's tooltip thoroughly, and don't be afraid to try things out. You would be surprised at what the game allows you to do when it comes to items and modifiers. I'll give you a quick example. Chromatic orbs allow you to change the colors of the sockets on an item. Use this when you need specific colors for your gems. Like most things in Path of Exile, it's nearly always a gamble to make sure you get the results you need, but that's half the fun. Anyway, I think we've covered a lot today. And now it's time for you to go play the game. Get into it. Try things out. Follow your build. Take your time and enjoy the ride. If you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments because if I've learned one thing about the Path of Exile community is that they love to help. If you want to join the community, make sure to come on Discord and join us. Link in the description. Link to support me in many, many ways are in the description too. Come hang out on Twitch and all that good stuff. Anyway... Thank you so much once again for watching this video. I hope it's been useful to you and we'll see you in the next one.